What's going on guys and welcome back to List Bait. Today we'll be going over the top 10 terrible games from amazing franchises. If you enjoy the video be sure to smash that thumbs up button and apart from that, let's get into this. Number 10, Crash Boom Bang. With the recent release of the Ensane Trilogy, Crash Bandicoot is more relevant now than he has been in over a decade. And while many people look back fondly at the original trilogy of games, as well as Crash Team Racing on the PS1, the Orange Marsupial has had a handful of missteps in the early 2000s with some good games like Crash Twin Sanity and some not so good games like Crash Bandicoot Purple. But by far the worst game to come out of this era of the Bandicoot series was Crash Boom Bang, a party game released in 2006 for the Nintendo DS. The story of the game focused on Crash and his friends competing in various activities to defeat the nefarious Dr. Cortex. The party game was released to almost unanimous negative reception with GameSpot criticizing Crash Boom Bang for its generic and unfun minigames and terrible controls. Despite the negative reception, Crash Boom Bang sold quite well and I think it's safe to say that regardless of the sales numbers, Crash Boom Bang is the low point in the Crash Bandicoot series. Number 9, Hotel Mario. As the number one selling game franchise of all time, it's no surprise that the Italian plumber has had a few missteps along the way. Following the massive success of Super Mario World in 1990, Nintendo began using the world of Mario as the backdrop for a series of very uninspired games for the Philips CDI. Hotel Mario is definitely the most notorious and this game was released to mixed reception at first, but in later years, Hotel Mario is not only viewed as one of the worst Mario games, but one of the worst video games of all time. The game was harshly criticized for using the Mario license on such a poor product and was deemed nearly unplayable as a result of the horrible control. With over 100 game entries in the Mario franchise, it's no surprise that there have been a few rotten eggs along the way and Hotel Mario is certainly one of the worst. Hey, princess! How are we gonna find the princess with the power going out? Maybe there's a switch in one of the rooms. Remind me to check. Number 8, Duke Nukem Forever. The Duke Nukem franchise has never been a giant in the gaming community, but the third game in the main series, Duke Nukem 3D, is considered to be one of the first games to popularize first person shooters and was released to almost unanimous critical acclaim. Unsurprisingly, a sequel to the classic was both expected and anticipated, and the fourth game in the main series, Duke Nukem Forever, was delayed for over a decade before finally being released in 2011. The game was released to generally negative reception from both fans and critics, with many singling out the dated gameplay and controls, the very lazy script writing, however some praise was directed at the voice acting from returning voice actors, but sales numbers did clock in at less than 25% of what was initially expected. Duke Nukem 4 effectively killed the franchise, with forever being the last installment in the franchise nearly 7 years ago. Number 7, Link's Crossbow Training. When it comes to the Legend of Zelda series, the team behind these games have a very solid track record, with nearly every game featuring Link and Princess Zelda being classics in the eyes of most gamers. However, a singular spin-off, Link's Crossbow Training, released for the Wii in 2008 was met with very, very polarizing reviews. The game was heavily criticized for its complete lack of a story, as well as many reused assets from Twilight Princess. Many consumers complained that the game was much too short to warrant its price, which matched many full length games released around the same time, and while not a complete train wreck, Link's Crossbow Training is known as one of very few missteps in the Legend of Zelda franchise. Number 6, Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness. Throughout the 1990s and the early 2000s, the Tomb Raider franchise was a force to be reckoned with, and when the development team behind Lara Croft began developing the first entry for the sixth generation of consoles, 
they hoped to create a game that could rival other popular action games of the time, as well as fully exploit the new hardware they had to work with. The game was eventually delayed twice before finally being released in 2003, and upon release, sales numbers for the game were very strong, but both fans and critics alike were less than impressed with Laura's debut on the next generation of consoles. The game was panned for its mini bugs and terrible controls, and the Tomb Raider franchise saw a complete reboot following the release of Angel of Darkness, despite a planned trilogy following the storyline of this game. Tomb Raider is a franchise that has definitely seen many ups and downs, but Angel of Darkness was far from a step in the right direction. Number 5. Spiral the Dragon, Enter the Dragonfly of all the games on this list, Enter the Dragonfly is the earliest entries in a franchise that is commonly accepted as the worst game in the series, with Enter the Dragonfly only being the fourth console entry in the Spyro franchise. Following the extremely successful PS1 Spyro trilogy, Enter the Dragonfly was the first game to also be released on a Nintendo console as well, with the game being released on both the PS2 and the GameCube. Now while this game is quite faithful to the gameplay style of the original trilogy, the game suffered greatly from its extremely rushed development. This was also the first game in the series to not be developed by Insomniac Games, and boy, does it show. The game is regularly known as one of the glitchiest and most incompletes ever officially released, but the Spyro franchise did eventually redeem itself with entries such as a personal favorite of mine, A Hero's Tale. Number 4. Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified while many entries in the Call of Duty franchise are very polarizing among the fans, one entry that most can agree on is quite terrible is Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. Black Ops Declassified was the only game to ever be released for the PS Vita, and it's clear from the get-go that this game was just the beginning and the end of a era. The game is very notable as one of the worst games in gaming history. The handheld game was criticized heavily for its extremely short campaign, clocking in at less than one hour, and the multiplayer maps were described as being so incredibly small that you would spawn in with multiple enemies in your crosshair. Black Ops Declassified marked both the beginning and the end of the Call of Duty's run on the Vita, and no entries in the franchise have been released for any handheld systems since this one. Number 3. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast The history behind Donkey Kong Barrel Blast is extremely interesting, and researching the history behind it was truly fascinating. The game was originally being developed for the Nintendo GameCube in late 2004, with the GameCube bongos used to control Donkey Kong Bongo Beat intended to be the primary form of control in this game. After two years of delays, the GameCube version of the game was eventually scrapped completely in favor of a release on the brand new Wii console. This led to the developers of the game being forced to conform the game's controls to the Wiimote and the Nunchuck, which was the main point of criticism for this game. The controls were extremely broken and made completing some of the later more challenging levels nearly impossible. The game was also heavily criticized for its last gen graphics despite being released on the Wii. Number 2. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 What really is there to say about this game? The Tony Hawk series of games was extremely popular in the mid-2000s, and people were overjoyed and very excited to relive their childhood on the next generation of consoles when Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 was announced. The game was critically panned upon release, with nearly every aspect of the game facing extreme criticism, including short, uninspired missions, unappealing graphics, and many, many, many day one glitches. It is unclear at this time if Hawk intends to continue the franchise after both the critical and commercial failure of Pro Skater 5. Number 1. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 The Blue Hedgehog has certainly had his share of bad games throughout the years, but the most notorious has to be Sonic 06. The game was intended to be a full reboot to the series, taking the franchise in a more serious direction with a more realistic setting. The game faced extremely troubled development, and many core gameplay aspects were scrapped from the game altogether on the cutting room floor. Upon release, reviews were mixed, but throughout the years, Sonic 06 has become extremely notable for being one of the most broken games of all time. The title is filled with many game-breaking glitches and very buggy controls, and the story of the game was also met with very negative reaction, with very, very few fans of the series appreciating the dark and serious undertones of the game. And that's going to do it for us here at Lispate today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, definitely hit that subscribe button. And apart from that, I will see you in the next one.